Now, I say that to say Solomon warns, or his mom then warns a little different story a few verses over. They warn of the, pro the, the problems that most men have. Most men get into situations where they have a hard time distinguishing between the praying woman, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, and the praying woman, P-R-A-Y-I-N-G. They can't distinguish between the two. And if you're not careful, you will start to despise the one that is P-R-A-Y-I-N-G, and you'll start to be attracted to the one that is preying on you. And because you can't distinguish between the two, and, and quite honestly, as Solomon warns, the one that is preying on you becomes and looks more attractive. And I know some people say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, but I'm telling you it to be true, and I, I, I'll say this, and we know it's true, but no one will admit it. It's amazing to me, but try it and see, just do your own evaluation. It's amazing to me, it's things that a man, when married, won't do with his wife, but the mistress, he'll do anything for her. Take her anywhere, she goes on the trips, she gets the nice clothes, the wife, if she spends money, he complains. Oh, you always wanna go somewhere, why can't we stay at home? But the moment the strange woman says, let's go on a trip, I'm there. The moment the strange woman says, I need X, I'm there. And so all the things that should be done for the praying woman, P-R-A-Y, we don't do. But all the things that we do, the, anything that the praying woman, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G wants, we own it. And so it makes no sense when you step back and look at it, but it is reality though. <laughs> And I, I can't explain it to you other than to say it's crazy. This is good, dude. So, um, but, but Solomon tries to warn us. He says, when a man knows the difference between a praying woman and a praying woman, he says his life will be better. Go to the uh, go to Proverbs chapter 31. And he tries to tell us a story here. Give us some more wisdom. He says, the words of King... Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So this is his mom talking. She says, what my son and what the, uh, what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto the women, nor thy ways to, uh, to which that destroyeth kings. Understand she's telling you this is how King Solomon got destroyed. Her first warning at the end of the book, the last proverb, the mother says, son, son of my womb, love of my life, pretty much she says, don't give thy way to the woman. Or mother, understand, she didn't say woman, she says women, plural. She says plural, women. He didn't say the woman, she says women, so let's be clear about that. Plural. And understand it says, give not thy strength. And for, for, for just the sake of time, understand when, they, when she's talking strength, we only have a man only has his strength through God. So she says, don't give your God away by getting involved with all these women. She says, be very careful. Jump down to verse 10 now. But here's what she says, because I, and I'm skipping down to verse 10, because the rest of the book she warns, and we'll have to come back some other time, she seems to take very uh, great uh, umbrage with drinking. She says, be very careful of doing a lot of drinking. But we'll come back to that some other time. Then it comes and says, verse 10, she says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is above rubies. The heart of her husband do safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Won't be wasting anything. Remember, the other woman you're wasting everything. Then it says, verse 12, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant 
shipped bringeth, uh, bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion of her maidens. Now here's the one thing you got to understand. We talked about the proverb strange woman, what she does at night, but listen to what the wife does. She raises at night as well, but she's, she's giving to her family. She's producing for her household. She's bringing increase into the household. She considereth a field and by it with the fruit of her hands, she planteth the, a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthen her arms. She uh, perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. So understand once again, the woman of God, she's never in darkness. But understand the woman, a strange woman in Proverbs 7, she works in darkness. Then um, in verse 7, it's, in verse 19, I'm sorry, it says, she layeth her hands on the spindle and her hands hold uh, the staff. She uh, stretched out her hands to the poor, so she stretched out her hands to the poor, yea, she reaches uh, forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow um, for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is, uh, is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth uh, girdles unto the merchants. And then it says, strength and honor are her, her clothing. She shall rejoice in the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise, arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done, um, uh, uh, we talk about virtuously, but uh, thou excellently with them. So understand that this woman is totally different than the woman in verse seven. But I find it very interesting that Solomon talks about all, and he doesn't just talk about verse 7, but he talks about all the bad women up until the last verse. But he says, you won't know her unless you know God. Because if you're not careful, all the things that the Proverbs 30, uh, 31 woman is being described here, she's constantly working. Which means she's constantly doing other things for other people. She's constantly doing stuff. She's constantly in movement and understand sometimes if you're not, if you don't know God and you don't know your purpose and, and you, you know, you got a woman that's always moving and she's doing things, she's trying to grow the family, trying to grow her community, that can almost be a turnoff to a man that doesn't know God because he feels like that's he's true. in competition that's true. with her. And, and so now he's looking for a woman that's that would just sit down and will just be about the stuff he wants to be about. Understand the, the, the Proverbs 7 woman, the strange woman, she's about exactly what he wants to be about. She praises him and she has sex with him. It's good enough for me. That's all I, that's what a man wants. She, she is right there. So now, now you go to Proverbs 31 and you got a woman that's, that's doing stuff for the needy. She's in the community. She's working. She's trying to grow. And you're like, well, man, I just want, I just, I just need me a woman to sit down. Just be, but that's not, that's not, that's not godly though. Come on, you man. You understand? Preach. So, so, the, so if you're not careful, you get caught up. And then it says in verse 30, it says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give her, fruit, uh, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. A couple of things here that I find interesting about Proverbs 31. One, I, I, I really do once again feel in my core, Solomon saves this woman to the end. Because if you understand the book of Proverbs, Proverbs is a book written to all, all Christians, but to men in general, of saying, hey, if you want to be successful on this place called earth, here are the things you have to do to be, be a successful man. He doesn't talk about women until the end, the perfect woman, the wife, the virtuous woman. 
Because I think Solomon mm -hmm. is telling you, it's not until you have truly got an understanding of who you are in Christ that you can appreciate this woman. So he puts her at the end. But he understands and lets you know you're going to encounter a lot of women along the way that if you're not careful, they will divert you from your destiny. Mm -hmm. And so Solomon tries to warn because Solomon tries to warn because it happened to him. So he tries to warn. The other thing I find interesting about uh, the virtuous woman, she has, she, 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 she's praying for her husband. She only wants good for him. Her family prospers. But then the other thing I find in verse 23 that's powerful. It says, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. And you say, well, why is that important? Because let me tell you something about men. One of the greatest myths or fallacies about men is men don't talk. That is not true. Men talk a lot. And we'll talk about sex and sports all day. But more importantly, men talk about women. And understand what every man wants to hear about his wife is, she's different. And understand in verse 23, Solomon says, that he says her husband is known in the gates. So why is her husband known in the gates? This is Damon's read of it. I think her husband is known in the gates is because many men will try your wife. The question becomes, and the story gets out when she's tried, but always never accepts. And so you say, well, because you say, well, why, why is that known amongst the men? Because to a man, that's pretty powerful. Because that says that that woman has, that you're doing something in that woman's life that mean, that mean she, she don't need anything else. Because I'm telling you, and people don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you, a man is always going to try a woman. Whether he's married, not married, whether she's married, not married, he's going to test her. But it says here in verse 23, it says her husband is known in the gates. Other men say, I don't know what you're doing to your, your wife, man, but I tell you what, she's she a good woman. She ain't, man. She, I tell you what, I, I, we, you know. And they're not coming out and saying directly that they challenge your wife, but the word is getting out. And so it says you're known, not because of who you are, but because of your wife that you're known. So men start to take a, a challenge of what are you doing where your wife can't even be tempted? We can't even send it out of the way to your wife. She don't, she don't fall for it at all. She don't entertain it. So men start to notice it says when he sitteth among the elders of the land. People that know said, you know, we, we can't challenge her. So um, one of the things we got to be mindful of, and, and as I close that Solomon also tries to tell us here in the book of Proverbs, you'll find three things that are pretty important. He says a man, in order to be successful, got to get control of your pride, got to get control of your money, and you got to get control of women in your life. Those three things, he talks about some of them, but those are pretty three powerful things. But one of the things Solomon also tries to tell you is, if you got a virtuous woman, and this is trouble for a lot of men, when she speaks, listen. And so, because Solomon understands a man's pride sometimes won't let him appreciate what he has. And so when a woman says something to you, sometimes it might challenge you, sometimes it might not be what you desire, and your pride won't let you receive it. But I'm telling you, a man will always regret when his woman of God tells him something and he does the opposite. I guarantee you, he always regrets it. Always, 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 he will regret it. You should always take heed when the woman of God tells you something and you know it's of God. Let me be clear. Come on now, if you come know on it's of God, now, you it. should always take heed of it. Even if it don't make you feel good. Because understand, unlike the Proverbs 7 woman. Unlike the strange woman, the virtuous woman's job is not to make you comfortable. Her job is to grow you. Her job is to make sure your ideas become dreams because that's what her job is. Whereas the strange woman, she's not there to make you grow. She's not there to challenge you. She's there to please you. And the strange woman's job is to please you because when we're on this place called Earth, there is no heaven on earth, but we want one so bad. We are we looking for heaven on earth so bad. Anything that's easy in life, we want it. And I'm telling you on this place called earth, it's not designed to be heaven. Never will be. And so the same thing as men, we got to start understanding women. 
Anytime you got this woman and this, everything just is perfect and everything is working out right, you better be careful that you're not falling victim to the strange woman. You better really go back and study because the strange woman, she's too perfect. She's too perfect. She makes no challenge. She doesn't stress you. She doesn't grow you. She doesn't ask you to grow. She's okay with you being right where you are forever. And so the reason we talk about beware of the praying woman is you better be careful that you don't get involved with or become attracted to women that are praying on you. And that is P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. They're praying on you. But you better make sure you got to be aware of her, but you better be clinging to a woman that is praying for you. There is a huge difference. And on this morning, I close by saying this. We understand in the, in the, in the book um, of, of, of Mark that, I think it's in Matthew 2, but we understand when, when Jesus is standing trial and the one person that comes to his defense and says, do that man no harm, is the wife of Pontius Pilate. She says, I had a dream. Don't touch that man. Leave him alone. Now understand, that woman has, she doesn't care about Jesus. She wasn't a Jew. She didn't care. She didn't care anything about, she didn't care, she didn't care anything about Jesus. No relation to him. Totally outside of it. But understand what this woman did have. She had enough sense to know. After she had that dream, she spoke to her husband. She says, don't touch that man. Leave him alone. He's done no harm. And do you understand if she would, if she would, if he would have just merely listened to his wife, his life would have been much, much different. But oftentimes, much like most men, your life would be a lot easier if you just listen to your wife. But for whatever reason, like Solomon says, you got to be real careful because it is, it is a pull on you. And I say, I don't know about daily, but it's a, it's a pull to constantly be somebody poking at you about it's got to be something better. All right, and I don't even say it's better. It's just got to be something easier. And so I warn every man on this morning, be careful that you don't get trapped and get caught up into trying to find somebody that makes your life easier. Because that is, that's, I'm telling you that's a trick. It's not about easy. It's about somebody making your life better. And understand better oftentimes means you have to grow. Requires growth. And doesn't require you being comfortable. So with that, I close this morning. I uh, hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, go, go read the book of Proverbs if you had not read it. I try to read at least once a year. So much great wisdom in there. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.